Suns get a little better, a little worse. Well, it's a, it's a smart way of you to phrase it, a little better or a little worse, because it's a nuanced question, right? In terms of the centerpiece of what Phoenix got, Yusuf Nurkic is a downgrade from DeAndre Ayton, just in terms of age, talent, injury history, stuff like that. However, in the big picture, I think they got better. I think they had the supporting cast come in that they really desperately needed some of that depth. I like Nasir Little a lot as a player. I think I he's going to do a lot I agree. for them. Yeah. Um, and the Ayton situation had just become untenable for yeah. them. They've been He's been on the trading block for over a year, right? And he feels disrespected by the franchise. The franchise felt he never growed or matured into the player they hoped he would be. There was such a need for a fresh start, and really probably before the season started, so it wasn't a lingering issue. That's just a huge win for Phoenix right there. So I think in the aggregate, they did well. And they need Nurkic to, A, stay healthy, B, get into more of the defensive player that he was before he got hurt a couple years ago. But overall, I think it's a win for them. It's a, it's a win. It's not, you know, oh, my God, blockbuster win. But it's enough to bump them up in that Western Conference that's so competitive. So I think you're saying there's some addition by subtraction. Both, On yeah. DeAndre Ayton. My friend Lil Wayne was sitting courtside. I'm going back two years ago as they flamed out against Dallas. Do you remember mm -hmm. these, I think it was a Sunday afternoon? Oh, yes. When I was at that game. Monty Williams and DeAndre got into it, and he yanked him and sat him down at the end of the bench and did not let him back in the game. Mm -hmm. Wayne told me he had never heard such language, and he sat courtside at a whole lot of basketball games mm -hmm. in his life, that ensued between Monty, who's one of the best humans you'll ever meet, yes. and DeAndre, who I've never heard as a bad guy. They just no, clashed. They, they just got into it. And it was do not invite him. Yeah. And it was shocking to me that they tried to go ahead and pay him and go forward this past year because it was always just a little awkward and uncomfortable. Yep. Then they go get KD at the deadline. And I thought, OK, will that save the world in Phoenix? I thought it would. I thought it might vault them to the top. Mm -hmm. But the Aiton issue quietly hung over this team's head like a 100%. cloud yes. in Phoenix in yes. the Valley of the Sun yep. all the way through the Denver series. Yep. I didn't think Kevin played great against Denver, especially I, I still haven't gotten over that closeout game. It was at Phoenix, yes. and I just looked up Kevin's numbers, and he it just wasn't Kevin. He was 23-5-5 mm -hmm. five and five in that game, mm -hmm. didn't even attempt a three, was 8 of 19 from the floor. Yeah. It wasn't awful. It just wasn't it KD. Was KD yeah. And they, they had CP3 ready to return for a potential game seven. And remember when he went down, KD pulled his hamstring, yes. which he pulls like – every other week, I guess, but, <laughs> but when he pulled it at Denver in game two, I or was it game one? I'm losing yeah. track, but I think it was game two. But the, the point was they were in position to win that game yeah. in the third quarter, and then he's gone, and I thought, well, maybe if he can come back for a game seven at Denver, I would give them some shot, but right. KD's going to have to rise and shine. Well, obviously, now they went out and got Bradley Beal. Yes. And so the firepower with Book and KD and and Bradley Beal on the perimeter is unmatched in the league. Nobody can shoot with that group. Yeah. I guess Steph and Clay could make a case, but, but this is they're three. They're right there. Whew. So how good are the – where would you then rank the Suns in the West at this point? Well, look, to your point, first of all, the Suns didn't have the depth after making that KD trade for them to really go as far as their potential was in the playoffs. And they have that depth now in part because of this trade. Um, they also have a little bit more balance and harmony because I think DeAndre Ayton is an excellent person and it could develop into something really great for Portland. But he's going to have to prove it, and he was not able to do that uh, in Phoenix for, for a variety of reasons, some his fault, some not his fault. So I think that's going to be, yes, addition by subtraction, but not because he's a bad guy or no. a bad player. I got but it. Because, you know, that's going to be a healthy move for both sides there. When you look at them, where does that leave Phoenix in the West? I will always give the defending champs first courtesy, unless there's been some like major seismic move to that mm -hmm. roster. There's a little bit here and there that changed, but not a lot. And, and to me, they get the title as the preseason favorite because they are the ones who proved it last season against everyone else, and that means something to me. But then when you get below Denver, this trade to me helps Phoenix in that clot below Denver mm -hmm. as maybe, you know, in that second that second group mm -hmm. of, of real contenders and one of that the real, real powerhouse in the West, and I think teams are going to look out for them. 
I need to see how it clicks. Mm -hmm. I need to see how Bradley Beal fits with Kevin as he's, I think we can call Kevin an aging player. I don't mean he's old, but yeah. he's aging. He's yeah. starting to get up there. Yeah. And yet, when you talk about their depth last year, I defended it to a point because it wasn't horrible because they got Eric Gordon and Okogi. Every time I looked up, he was he was chipping in and doing yeah. some good things for them. And Damian Lee is, is, is a decent player. Now they've got Watt Nobby, but they listen. We didn't talk about Grayson Allen, but he's also yeah. a loss for Milwaukee because not only did they lose shooting, shooting, and he's a forty percent career three point shooter, shot forty last year, hundred percent, and and he has turned himself into. I'm not going to say he's a great defender, but he's decent because he's yeah. hard-nosed and he's tough. He's edgy. He's like a little, <laughs> a little, a little out there. Well, but, but since Duke, right? But, but it works. Mm -hmm. it, it works for him. He, he, will, he will certainly shore up their depth. I, I don't even know. He might even play some starter minutes with yeah. this group. I'm not even sure how this is going to pan out. But I like Nasir Little a lot, so it, mm -hmm. it helps your, your depth. But Grayson Allen is also a loss for Milwaukee, along yes. with Drew Holiday from the defensive perspective yeah. and they can they can both shoot the three mm -hmm. so all of a sudden if, if Grayson Allen comes here it, it it gives you more depth firepower mm -hmm. where, where you can come more in waves than you used to so do you think yeah. this makes them the favorite in the west no I can't listen I I doubted Denver all last year and they, I finally just said man those two guys, and it's those yes, two. It's both of them. They are really good. Obviously, Nurkic, I still think Embiid's a little better than Nurkic, but we could go on and on. He finally broke through and won the MVP. But when it was time, I mean, get, right? then yo, I'm, yep. I mean, Nurkic. Uh, yeah, Nurkic. We've been talking yes, about yeah, Nurkic yes, all morning, yeah, so, so I okay, get it. But, but he's now their guy here. Yeah. And to your point, he's pretty good. Yeah. He's not DeAndre Ayton, but... But the problem was DeAndre Ayton was never really DeAndre Ayton for these guys for exactly. whatever reason. 100%. He never got happy. He never played happy. Didn't work. He, he never played high motor to me. And maybe he doesn't have a high motor. He drove Monty Williams crazy trying to push the right button. Yep. Even in the finals against Giannis, he kept trying to put DeAndre single coverage on Giannis. And he just yep. got destroyed. Yep. Because... He doesn't play with raw, high energy emotion. Well, we'll see this okay. season. He's okay. going to have this is a huge prove it year for DeAndre Ayton, right. right? If he blossoms yeah. in Portland, then he can say, oh, it was them, not me. Right. If he struggles in Portland, yeah. then it's going to be, it was me, not them. So we'll have to see what All happens. Right. So, Nurkic, he, he knows how to play, he knows how to set yeah. picks. He's got a big body, he can bang with you. And, and he's, he's like sort of a poor man's. Mr. Denver, you know, yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. he's that guy, right? Yeah. He's, yeah. So the the point is, I still can't put them above Denver, right? Above Jokic and Jamal, because Jamal played. Listen, he that was superstar. What what I saw and last year. And that team component in Denver to me is yeah. so important. Those guys have been together for years, and not just the two guys, but the supporting group and yeah. Michael Malone. I, I think that is ultimately what won the title for them was yeah. their cohesiveness as a team, and that still holds for this season. It does. And Phoenix is a bunch of parts who just came together, but they're very good parts. All right. The Lakers have very good parts. Agreed. I still like the Lakers. They're a in that whole group lot. to me too. That, in fact, that number two at, hanging at around. At this group. moment right now, I got to. Mm -hmm. They need to prove it to me. This new Phoenix group, but yeah. I, I think the Lakers right now are a touch better than Phoenix. I'll, I'll give them okay. just a notch better right. and a notch below Denver. Okay. So again, could could Denver sort of find itself? Could it, it suddenly? figure it out on the fly because they couldn't figure it out on the fly and it was just too much too soon they got thrown together last year and they, the lakers right the, and then the, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but but the lakers I think could really figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think no. they've already figured it out. They had workouts uh, down in San Diego, and by all reports, it was just humming that everybody really fit in well together, that the vibe was very good among teammates, which has not always been the case since LeBron came because of different parts moving in and out of the locker room, Russ, we know, you know, things like that. So I think they are going to be a force, absolutely. And then Phoenix, we'll, we'll have to see. I think when you talk about the Lakers versus Phoenix, the biggest factor is injuries, which mm. is the X factor we don't know right but how many games does anthony davis actually play how many games does kevin durant actually play to your point about his age and some of the other issues that he's had so i think that's going to factor into where those two teams rank against each other as much as anything else and finally there is no more cp3 with the suns yes and he is definitely an aging player a lot of people think he's an over the hill aging player i don't yeah and because of that they're going to miss 
his guidance, his presence, his leadership, his direction, his playmaking. Even once Kevin got there, a lot of the big late shots, because they were just daring CP3 to shoot, yeah. and he was making and a lot of big shots. Those and they missed him against Denver when yep. he pulled his hamstring. 100%. Well, the problem is, is he? how many times will he pull his hamstring this year mm -hmm. with Golden State? Well, Golden State, you, you made the case, would Golden State go after Drew Holiday? They might. I mean, but, who knows? But, but the point is, who runs the show now in in Phoenix, I'm I'm not sure. I like all the, the pieces, but do they have a quarterback? Do they have? I mean, yeah. look, in terms of on the yeah. floor, a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, it, I think in terms of emotionally and in the locker room, this is the challenge for Devin Booker, right? KD is well, he's obviously. he's going to have to be that guy. Yes. And he's going to have to distribute also. Yes. No, he is. Absolutely. Yeah. KD is obviously, you know, the more senior guy on that team, yeah. the more experienced, the guy with the rings. So I'm not saying that Book is above him in that sense, but Kevin is much more laid back. Yeah. This isn't his team the way it's Book's team. And I absolutely feel this is a step up year for Devin Booker as well, not mm. just on the court, which he has continued to be just, I mean, exceptional, exceptional. but off the court and in the locker room, yep. you know, Chris is gone and he is taking more of that. Now yep. I'm the leader of this team role. And I think that's going to be interesting to watch him develop Ooh. that way too. Rachel Nichols knows this stuff. <laughs> But I know about the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Keyshawn and Michael really know about the Dallas Cowboys. So who's most to blame for the Cowboys' struggles in the red zone? That's a deep question. And we hear from you next on hashtag Undisputed Live. No mercy, no mercy, no mercy. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.